All right, welcome back. We've got a Saturday stock market update and a lot to talk about. This will be a shorter video. Uh, I could make this an hour long if I wanted to, but um, I'm going to briefly touch on a lot of topics. Um, and I will do separate videos on some of the tech earnings. But this week we had a lot of volatility. We had more red in the stock market and we've got the NASDAQ down and an official correction. Uh, the Russell 2000 gave up most of its gains, looked like overnight, just waterfalled back down. The S&P 500 is now officially down over 5%. Um, you've got the Dow Jones as well. So broad-based selling across the board, Bitcoin flirting with 60,000. Um, so no asset is safe. And um, we also have the 10-year yield here um, plummeting. So we're seeing interest rates drop drastically and people are, looks like, selling stocks and buying bonds. And they're doing that because they know the Fed's next move will be to cut rates. So this week we did have the Fed meeting. They uh, did not move, but they hinted at a rate cut the next meeting. Um, and then on Friday, we had a jobs report come out and the jobs were well short of expectations and causing all kinds of panic in the market. Friday, we saw the largest sell-off in the market since 2020. And it wasn't just U.S. markets. We saw a lot of selling in Japan, China, Europe, around the world, people liquidating assets. Um, so quite interesting there. Um, again, a lot of volatility, a lot of volatility, a lot of fear on the market. Um, if you look at the NASDAQ, um, but even especially individual stocks like Nvidia, it was down 7% one day, then up 7%, the largest stock move in history the next day. And then it gave all those gains back. It just, it was all over the place. Um, but there was a lot of economic data this week. There was a lot of earnings this week. So, um, you could just feel the market is uncertain on where it wants to go. Um, but f Friday was pretty decisive of, okay, risk off, get out. Um, and let's, let's just move to the sidelines. Let's go into bonds while we can before the Fed cuts rates. And let's reposition when there's more certainty on, um, are we in a recession? Are we heading into a recession? Did we miss a recession? What's the election look like? A lot of uncertainty. Um, so it just, it kind of seems like the market has a thousand reasons to sell. And unless you're long-term focused on high quality businesses, there's not a ton of reasons to buy, but that's me. I'm a long-term investor focusing on high quality businesses. So, um, I'll talk more about that in our Amazon video that will be coming out today. Uh, but around the world, we did have the bank of Japan raise rates now. I'm going to be doing some more research on what's going on there, but it could be there could be something correlating with what's going on in Japan um, to what's going on throughout the world. So um, I'll do some more research on that and I'll decide to make a video if I feel it's relevant. If not, we'll uh, we'll talk about it another day. Um, as I mentioned, the Nasdaq is officially down 10% and is in correction territory. And on Friday, we did have the SOM rule get triggered. Now, the SOM rule, this person came up with this rule that if unemployment starts to increase at a certain rate, they call it the SOM rule. And that is a leading indicator that we have most likely entered or are entering into a recession. So you're seeing these indicators start to pop up, soft jobs, um, companies laying people off like an Intel. Intel is down 30% this week uh, or just on Friday. Um, so there's a lot of softness in the market and it's looking like there's more and more softness in the economy. And the question is, um, how much more pain are we going to see there? Are we just at the beginning of something? Um, or is this just a blip on the radar here in a bull market? Now we're seeing yield curve move drastically. So we haven't talked about the yield curve inversion in a while. We talked about this a while ago. I made a video on it a long time ago. 
So let's revisit it. So when the yield curve, we've got the 10 year minus the two year chart here. And this is a long duration chart. Uh, this is what, 40 years of data. So these gray bars here are when we enter a recession. When the yield curve drops below this black line, it's called an inversion. When we pop back above this black line, we uninvert, we normalize. And that um, once we uninvert or normalize, we typically see a recession after. So you can see here on this chart, yield curve would go inverted. It comes out of inversion, gray bar recession in 1990. Same thing over here in 2001, invert, uninvert, recession. 2008, invert, uninvert, recession. 2020, slight, tiny inversion, uninvert, recession. Now we've been inverted for a long time and we've just been hanging out there. Every time we get close, we go back to inversion or deeper inversion. But here we are, we're getting real close to that uh, black line. We're getting close to uninverting. The Fed's next move will be to cut interest rates, which will normalize the yield curve. And the question is going to be how big or how long until we have a recession, if we do have one. So um, the market is uneased on whether we're in a recession right now and we don't know <laughs> or we're walking right into one. And is it going to be a 1990 recession or is it going to be a 2008 great financial crisis because something drastically um, goes wrong? We don't know. I'll tell you in five years. How about that? Um, but we have no clue. So um, the market is just looking to de-risk a little bit and um, let things play out. So we had some big tech earnings. Again, I'll do separate video on some of these earnings. Um, Microsoft, Apple, Meta, Amazon. The numbers were good across the board. Um, AI spend is still strong and they say that it's going to continue. So um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I think it's fine. I think these companies have a ton of money and um, I just think what these companies said on earnings means you want to continue to own NVIDIA <laughs> for a while. So uh, NVIDIA still has earnings in a few weeks. We'll talk about that as we get closer. Um, and I will do a separate video, especially on Amazon um, these next couple weeks. I don't think I pulled up the heat map. So real quick, we'll pull up the heat map. Uh, just same story that we've seen these last few weeks, red in technology, a little bit of green in some of the beaten up, um, neglected areas of the market this year. So you're seeing defensive stuff get a bid, healthcare, McDonald's, um, household beverages, you know, things that people are going to buy no matter what, tobacco going up. You're seeing real estate get a bid because of the relaxation and real uh, or interest rates. So this week, or this was just a one day, let me pull up the one week, pretty similar, right? Red in technology, green in some of those defensive areas and neglected areas for the last few months. People taking profits in the winters and going into the laggards that will hold up a little bit better in a recession. Now, to me, Amazon will do fine in a recession. Will people sell Amazon stock? Sure. Will people sell NVIDIA stock and chip stocks? Sure, but um, I'm not canceling my Amazon Prime. I will still buy products on Amazon. I think AWS will still be fine. Um, will it be growing at the rate it has been? Maybe not, but we'll have to wait and see. So same thing with Apple. Warren Buffett sold half of his position um, in the recent quarter. I uh, saw that announcement this morning. Whether he's just taking profits, he sees something he doesn't like. Buffett's not a dumb guy. He's got a ton of cash. He is waiting for something to happen and be able to scoop in and buy things on the cheap. Um, he doesn't see anything he likes right now and he's continuing to raise cash even though he has a boatload of cash. So for him to go in and say, I'm selling half of my Apple here, um, he's gearing up to do something with that money. Uh, who knows what that'll be uh, or when that'll be. So we'll have to wait and see what that looks like. Um, other thing I want to talk about in this video is our action items. So I did have a video. I hope you watched it. Um, it was with my shopping list uh, for this market sell-off. 
And it was great. It's great to have a plan and to be able to stick to the plan. Because in a week like we had this week where there's just craziness, um, you could see NVIDIA at 102 one day and then 109 the next day and think, I need to get in now. And then it just falls back down to 100 bucks. So have your plan. Stick to it. Um, the only thing I did in my portfolios this week was I did acquire some Amazon on Friday. Um, to me, that's a, that's a good price to start buying some Amazon. Now, it could get worse. I have no clue. Um, but I stuck to my plan, and I will continue to stick to my plan. And I will adjust my plan um, as I see fit going through this um, scenario, or whatever we call this, the situation, this volatility that we're in. So action items are to be ready to withstand a recession and or a black swan event. So there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Um, I would just recommend, and I'm doing this for myself personally, to be prepared for half of your income to be cut. Someone gets laid off in your family, you lose customers, um, your pay raise that you are expecting doesn't happen. Bad things happen in a recession. Intel just laid off 15 to 20% of their workforce. Hopefully you don't work there, but companies are gonna to have to cut back if we do enter into uh, or continue to stumble into these potential hard times. So be prepared for that and um, be prepared for the crazy unknown. So if 2008 rolls around or something, uh, if the pandemic crash happens again, if something to that magnitude happens, just be prepared for any possibility um, be prepared for the worst, hope for the best. Um, and so just, I want to put that in people's minds, you know, take some time this weekend, go over your personal finances. What are my expenses? Do I have a, a little buffer if something were to happen? Like my, my income gets cut in half so you can withstand a recession. If something bad happens and you are not able to withstand it, you're in complete survival mode. You're not able to benefit from the upswing generational wealth was made in the pandemic or the 2020 market crash and the 2008 market crash every time there's a market crash there's a generational opportunity to buy blue chip assets for dirt cheap prices now if you're in complete survival mode and you're not able to withstand and then thrive on the way up you're going to miss out on that and that could be the difference of retiring five years ten years early um, or just completely changing the trajectory of your life so I think now's the time to start preparing for um, something crazy to happen you should always be prepared but especially now where it's like ooh, there's all these warning lights popping up all over the place I think it's a good time to uh, just sit down and write some things out and say do I really want to do that vacation do I really need to do that right now or can I hold off a little bit whatever that could be for you so I know for me personally I'm hunkering down a little bit. Uh, I'm a huge golfer. My driver is broken. I'll use a three wood for the next few months. That's fine. We're about to finish up summer and I'll take a break from golf anyway. So maybe I buy a driver when they're on sale in the winter. Uh, that's just a small, stupid example uh, for my personal um, scenario. So still have your shopping list ready. I do think now is a dollar cost average, a good time to dollar cost average, but I think it's important to still keep some dry powder ready so just an example if you have ten dollars maybe you put one dollar to work um, right now not financial advice do what's best for you read the disclaimer down below but that's just an example um, you don't want to let these good opportunities go to waste because for all i know we rip up august tends to have a hundred percent green um, 100 percent green in august when we have an election year so maybe we have a, a huge green month a uh, huge bounce out of this I don't know um, but I do think it's a good opportunity for a small dollar cost average uh, I like Nvidia here I like Amazon here I think there's things to buy and be constructive um, but also you want to keep some powder ready for the black swan the recession whatever but if I have a hundred percent cash and I'm looking around I don't want to be sitting here holding cash forever when Amazon's on the cheap um, you know take advantage of some of these dips uh, but don't just throw everything in right now. That's not a good way um, of deploying money into the market. So we've already talked about these other three. Build cash, um, build your cash, cash position, be ready, be liquid. That's been there for months. Um, 
If you've done that, you're happy right now. Um, selling options to hedge and build cash, selling options right now is, is really lucrative. Um, selling covered calls against your stock to hedge against the downturn. Tesla's been great selling calls on. It was a little sketch there for a while when it was ripping up selling calls, um, but it worked out because um, now we're back to 200 bucks and if you sold calls and they had a long enough duration, those covered calls are in um, really good shape, uh, giving you extra cash to go buy the dip or to just build your cash position. And selling puts is a great way to buy stocks at a certain price. We've already talked about that. So selling options right now with the volatility being high um, is a good option as well uh, to help build your cash position and reduce some of the sting of the market going down. Um, I'm not buying aggressively. Uh, I did buy Amazon this week. No other dollar cost average. Um, and that's it for this past week. Uh, we'll see what next week brings us. But that is all I got for this stock market update. Uh, stay tuned for some earnings videos. And have a great weekend, everybody. Peace out.